Good evening, my brothers and sisters in Christ. Welcome to this prayer at the close of the day. It's Tuesday, the 15th day of February, year of our Lord, 2022. I do pray this finds you well. Nice day out today. That's supposed to be even nicer tomorrow, but you know, we're in that time of year. We still get the big temperature swings one way or the other. So, uh, uh, yeah, and there. I did hear of a potential storm, like snow later week, but I think that's fizzled. Um, or, or you know maybe move far in the north because it's gonna be quite quite nice tomorrow like mid 50s so uh, that'll be that'll feel really really nice really nice after a long winter in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit Amen the Lord Almighty grant us a quiet night and peace at the last Amen it is good to give thanks to the Lord to sing praise to your name O Most High to herald your love in the morning your truth at the close of the day. Once again, we turn to the daily lectionary, and we're going to read from the New Testament portion of the daily lectionary, which is a continuation of where we left off last night, picking up where we left off last night. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the fifth chapter, beginning at the 19th verse. So Jesus said to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, the Son can do nothing of his own accord, but only what he sees the Father doing. For whatever the Father does, that the Son does likewise. For the Father loves the Son, and shows him all that he himself is doing. And greater works than these will he show him, so that you may marvel. For as the Father raises the dead and gives them life, so also the Son gives life to whom he will. The Father judges no one, but has given all judgment to the Son, that all may honor the Son, just as they honor the Father. Whoever does not honor the Son does not honor the Father who sent him. Truly, truly I say to you, whoever hears my word and believes him who sent me has eternal life. He does not come into judgment, but is passed from death to life. Truly, truly I say to you, an hour is coming and is now here when the dead will hear the voice of the Son of God and those who hear will live. For as the Father has life in himself, so he has granted the Son also to have life in himself. And he has given him authority to execute judgment because he is the Son of Man. Do not marvel at this, for an hour is coming when all who are in the tombs will hear his voice and come out. To those who have done good to the resurrection of life, and those who have done evil to the resurrection of judgments. And that is the gospel of the Lord. Well, we see in that text, you know, a couple of, a uh, number of repetitions of truly, truly, and I've talked to you about that before. Just a brief recap ago. Remember, Jesus does not speak like one of the prophets of the Old Testament, or I speak as a pastor. I can only say, thus says the Lord. Jesus speaks as the Son of God. So he says, you know, truly, truly, I say to you. And we see that a number of times. You know, he is God. And we see that, too, in this text, that his relationship with the Father, that he and the Father are one. And then a very startling thing that he says, especially in the context, and this is what's going to be, uh, this is what the charge is going to be leveled against him. He says, okay, uh, whoever does not honor the Son does not honor the Father who sent him. Uh, so uh, the Son is as one of the members of the Holy Trinity, of Godhead, he is equal to the Father. He is sent from the Father. He is the Father's Son. People who uh, occasionally say this, you know, that Jesus never claims he's God. Well, he doesn't, he does actually say that, um, but he says things like this, you know, so the people would, would understand. It's like, yeah, okay, you know, God's the Father, but you're the Son and you are, you, you, you're in communion with the Father. Uh, you and the Father are one. So, and they come to the conclusion, they know exactly, they, they say he's, they know exactly what he's claiming. They say he makes himself equal with God. You know, and that's, again, a trial, that the uh, an accusation that's going to be leveled against him at his trial. So, he says an interesting thing here, and he's going to come back to this theme. He talks about judgments. Okay, that uh, um, the son has the authority, the father judges no one, but he has given all judgment to the son. Well, that's key. So God, the only judge in the scheme of salvation, 
you know, within the Trinity is the Son. Now that's very important for you and me. It's actually really good news for you and me. Because what he's go on to, he goes on to say, again, this is prefaced by truly, truly. Truly, truly, I say to you, whoever hears my word, faith comes by hearing, Paul will say that, and believes him who sent me has eternal life. And that belief is not, we think about, okay, believe, believe, believe. Like, it, it doesn't work that way. God speaks, you go, amen. And we, we, we have that all the time. You know, most of us live our lives taking people at their word. God says, do that with me. And he's God. And he says, you know, baptism now saves you. We say, amen. And he says, take ye, this is my body. We say, amen. Take drink, this is my blood. We say, amen. Um, and that's what faith looks like. You know, it is this wonderful way of being. We just live in this simple trust of what God says based on what he's done, too. You know, he, he, he demonstrates why he's trustworthy, not just, you know, uh, you, you, that he is faithful to what he says. So, truly, truly, I say to you, he did, whoever believes him who sent me has eternal life, already has it. That goes back to like the Sermon on the Mount. Jesus says, Jesus says, the first thing he says in that great sermon that we all know, at least the beginning of, is blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Truly, truly, I say to you, whoever hears my word and believes him who sent me has eternal life. Not will have, not did have, you have it. You have eternal life. Why? Because Jesus has come to save you. Notice, he does not come into judgment, but passes from death to life. That's an interesting thing. We're, we're, and there's that theme running throughout this. We're born dead. We're under the curse. When you eat of it, you will die. So we die. You know, at first, it's, think of it like a genetic thing. You're, there's no getting out of this curse except through Jesus Christ. Now, this gets to what he's saying all right, that about him. You know, what a wonderful thing that, okay, God has given his son the authority to judge, and, Je you know, and, and Jesus says, what? Okay, you know, just trust in me, and there's no judgment for you. You, you, you. you pass right into life. Why? Because Jesus has been judged in our place. He's already received the judgment, the punishment. Truly, truly, I say to you, an hour is coming, and we read this at funerals for this reason. An hour is coming when the dead will hear the voice of the Son of God, and those who hear will live. And again, we're born dead. So we hear the voice of the Son of God, and we live. And remember, we, we, we pass from death to life. We hear that word, we have eternal life. Uh, for as the Father has life in himself, God is life. Our disobedience separates us from that life. Uh, we hear that at the beginning of John, you know, Jesus is the life, he's the light. Just as the Father has life in himself, so he has granted the Son also to have life in himself, and he's given him, we hear it again repeated, he has given him the authority to execute judgment, because he is the Son of Man. Again, that's good news. All right, and Jesus says this, do not marvel at this, for an hour is coming when all who are in the tombs will hear his voice. Now, this is where we speak about the physically dead among us. That the tombs will hear his voice and come out. Why? Because Jesus destroys death. He owns it, you know, and, and, and death has to do what Jesus says. And those who have come out, those who have done good to the resurrection of life, and those who have done, done evil to the resurrection of judgment. And that is not a statement of whether you haven't sinned or not, that your life is perfect. It's a statement of you know, being in Christ or not being in Christ. And that's what that's a statement. We don't have time to unpack that. But he could continue. We'll continue with this discourse tomorrow. All right, let's now confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Lord, now you let your servant go in peace. Your word has been fulfilled. My own eyes have seen the salvation which you have prepared in the sight of every people, a light to reveal you to the nations and the glory of your people Israel. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. 
And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray. Lord God, Heavenly Father, in these dark and latter days, we are surrounded by so much evil and so much temptation. Strengthen us that we may be delivered from these two things. Be with our brothers and sisters who are addicted and are despairing of your love. Be with the tortured and oppressed. Comfort them with the good news of our Lord Jesus Christ, the unending forgiveness that is poured out on us through his blood. We pray for all of us as each day we struggle with sin, with life in this fallen world. Keep us mindful of your forgiveness, your mercy, your love for us. Strengthen us that we may stand firm and repent. Um, Heavenly Father, as always, we pray for those who are crying out to you for healing. We continue to pray for our brother in Christ, Dave, who uh, uh, was moved to a facility, a uh, different facility um, today. Uh, we pray that uh, his move there would uh, uh, continue to be beneficial for him. And as he continues to heal and recover, we thank you for that. We pray uh, um, that uh, uh, the stress of moving would uh, go well uh, or would be uh, uh, overcome, that you'd bless the nurses and doctors in this facility who are caring for him and bless his family as they uh, remain so diligent in their care of him. Uh, we ask you to be with our sister in Christ, Lucille, and our brother in Christ, Dennis, and again, all who are crying out to you. For my brothers in office, Tony, Nicholas, and Dale, tonight, uh, we pray, I haven't received news yet, later today, but I know her situation was very grave for her sister in Christ, Deb. If it has pleased you to call her from this valley of sorrows this day, we ask you to bless her family with your peace. We give you thanks for the life and faith that she lived. Um, and uh, uh, we pray that she is now resting comfortably in your arms and that you have wiped the tear from her eyes. Uh, as her family, um, again, you know, they, uh, she may still be with us, but uh, her situation was so grave. But you are a God of both healing and salvation, but we do pray that you comfort her family. Keep them mindful of your empty tomb, the empty tomb of your son, Jesus Christ, and a joyful reunion before uh, your throne with all those who go before us in the faith. Heavenly Father, be with John, Jason, Josiah, Joe, Brandon, Billy, Samantha, Jim, D, and all who are crying out to you. Heavenly Father, again, keep us mindful that you are victorious through your Son, Jesus Christ, over death itself. Bless us always with this good news. All this we ask in the precious name of Jesus, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Visit our dwellings, O Lord, and in your great mercy defend us from all perils and dangers of this night. For the love of your only Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have graciously kept me this day. And I pray that you would forgive me all my sins where I have done wrong and graciously keep me this night. Into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul, and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. And yesterday we commemorated in the church uh, St. Valentine, and today um, Philemon and Onesimus. Uh, of course, there's a letter of St. Paul's that's written to Philemon, Onesimus' owner, about that whole situation. So as it is my custom on those days when we recall the lives of those who have gone before us, we sing, Ye Watchers and Ye Holy Ones, in 670. Ye watchers and ye holy ones, bright seraphs, cherubim, and thrones, raise the glad strain, hallelujah. Cry out dominions, princedoms, powers, virtues, archangels, angels, choirs, Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. Oh, higher than the cherubim, more glorious than the seraphim, lead their praises, Alleluia. The bearer of the eternal word, most gracious, magnify the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia, 
Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Grease upon ye souls in endless rest, ye patriarchs and prophets blessed. Alleluia, Alleluia. Ye holy twelve, ye martyrs strong, all saints triumphant, raise the song. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia. O friends in gladness, let us sing, supernal anthems echoing. Alleluia, Alleluia, to God the Father, God the Son, and God the Spirit, three in one. Alleluia. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. <clears throat> Excuse me. With that, my brothers and sisters, I bid you a pleasant evening. And by God's grace, we'll see you tomorrow night. Good night. <laughs>